Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your love for us. We give you praise, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. The bright and morning star. The great and glorious one. King Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Speak to our hearts through your word. Live mightily in us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Your spirit womb you have sent to be with us. The great comforter. Comfort hearts today. Renew minds by your word. Press your word into our hearts. Change us into the image that is you. And may your people leave this place triumphant. Victorious in every area of their lives. And for all that you do, be careful to say, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the praise. Give the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus is here. He is worthy of all our praise. The Bible says where two or more are gathered together in his name, there he is present to reveal himself to us, present to glorify the Father, hallelujah. But you should know that when you're by yourself, uh, he is with you. He promised to never leave you, nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. All right, we're ready to go in the Word? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to come with me to the Song of Solomon. It's also called Song of Songs. The Song of Solomon, also called Song of Songs. Chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 3 to verse 5. Hallelujah. The title of the message is Jesus. The apple tree. Hallelujah. I like that. I like that response. Amen. Somebody said, oh, that's beautiful. Amen. Jesus, the apple tree. Kind of a fanciful title. I like it. But actually, it's from the Bible. So, Song of Solomon, chapter 2. Verse 3. Let's go. It's also up on the screen. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, some Bibles uh, replace wood with the word forest. Anybody has forest? Amen. Everybody has wood? 
Wow, you have wood? Okay, cool. Praise God. All right, we'll take wood. <laughs> Amen. But uh, uh, some of the versions have forests. So as the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. So of course you notice that the apple tree is singled out, right? Everybody sees this? As the apple tree among the trees. Yes. So the lot of trees. But he's focusing on the apple tree. And this one who stands apart by himself in the forest of trees, or in the wood. The wood actually refers to humanity, humans. I'll explain in a moment with scripture. So, as the apple tree among the trees of the forest, as the apple tree among the trees of the wood, the wood of humanity, of humans, among humans, Jesus stands uppermost as the best, as the preeminent one, as the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Amen. So he says, so is my beloved among the sons. Jesus is called the only begotten of the Father. He's called the beloved of the Father. We are accepted in him, the beloved, according to Ephesians 1. All right, we continue. I sat down under his shadow, the shadow of the apple tree, with great delight. So I didn't sit down with fear or in fear. I didn't sit down begrudgingly. I sat down with great delight in anticipation of enjoyment, in anticipation of receiving something wonderful, something good. And I received it from verse three. You can see, he says, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. So, the speaker here was expecting something good and was not disappointed. Do you see that? Let's just go with the text as the text provides itself to us. Then I'll do the teaching and explain the symbolism, so on and so forth. But for now, no need to rush it. Let the text itself speak to us. Let the book speak to you. The Bible explains itself. Amen. Whenever you, you come to the Bible, to the word of God, know that God's word is light. And he uses scriptures from other parts of the Bible to shed light on whatever you study. And it is in his light that you receive more light. Amen. Amen. So never be in a rush to or, or be anxious. You wonder, well, what is it? God, what is it? You know, just just chill, relax. He will explain it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Okay, so let's do that text again. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood. All right, so you have lots of trees. Trees in the forest, trees in the wood. But he says, focus on the apple tree. Just to uh, be theologically correct or accurate, and also uh, be, be in line with the geography of the Bible, that is where this was written, the land where this was written, I have to explain that the use of the word apple here, and so the apple tree, could refer to other trees in the family of the apple tree. You understand that? There are other trees that are of the same family as the apple tree. So, uh, give me an example. Uh, shout it out, it's okay, shout it out to me. 
let's take uh, animals, for example, family of cats. Cats in the cat family. Give me a name of tiger. Tiger, tiger right? Cheetah. Leopard. Then give me the simple one. <laughs> give me the simple one. I already Lion. said Lion. the cat itself. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you can be talking about a specific thing, but it can have uh, other mm -hmm. things similar to it of the same family. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. In the geography of the land of the Bible, which would be where? The land of the Bible, primarily, principally, is what part of the world? The Bible. To make it easy for yourself. The Bible, God, <laughs> the Bible is about which people? Israel. The Jewish people, Israel, right? Yeah? yeah? Okay, the Old Testament is about Israel. Even the New Testament is about Israel, because Jesus Christ was Jewish. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is from Israel. He's not from Africa. He's not from Europe. Jesus Christ was from Israel. Israel is actually the center of the earth. Amen. Amen. People are very funny. They are fighting over where the Garden of Eden was. What difference will it make to your life? What, when you find out where it was. What difference, really? People are so insecure, they're looking for all these little, little things to add to their life. But I want to tell you that if you don't find your security in Christ, you don't find your security in God, all the little things you're looking for to add to your life, thinking that it'll make you feel complete, will make you feel even more sad and empty. Because you get it, and you're still incomplete. It's like feeling incomplete before you get married. Up to your marriage, you're still incomplete. <laughs> Amen. So stop saying your husband is your better half or your wife is your better half. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you are complete and you marry another complete human being. You are complete in Christ. You want to marry another complete human being. Yeah. And God's math is that the two of you become one. Oh no. No longer two, but one. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Jesus is not from Africa. He was taken to Africa as a child. So he's not from Africa. <laughs> he is not from Africa to have been taken to Africa. He was from some other place and he was taken to Africa as a child. This is simple mathematics. He could not have been from Africa to be taken to Africa. He was taken to Africa as a child. And out of Egypt I called my sons, Hosea 11. Out of Egypt I have called my son. Amen? Amen? When he was a baby, God came to his parents, to Joseph actually, and said, take the baby Jesus and the mother now. Right now. Don't even think about it, just do it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because Herod wants to kill the baby Jesus. So take him out now. I prepared a place for you in Egypt, Africa. So he was taken out of Israel. And he was taken by Joseph and his mother uh, Mary to Africa, to Egypt. And while there, God came back in a vision or a dream one day to Joseph said to him, take the baby Jesus back. Take the baby and the mother back. For those who sought to kill him, 
the death. Amen. 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 Media team, can you give us Hosea 11, 1, please? Let me just show the church. Let's do some real studying of God's word today. Amen. Amen. Okay, so give me Hosea 11, what did I say? One. One. Thank you. Do you have it? Oh, okay, great. Thank you. When Israel was a child, then I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. That is powerful. Amen. This was written by the prophet Hosea, and it has a dual reference. It talks about the infancy or the beginning of the nation of Israel. They were, the people of Israel ended up in Egypt. In fact, when they were in Egypt, they were not a nation. Israel was not a nation. Jacob went to Egypt when his son, Joseph, was prime minister in Egypt at the time of famine. If you remember, it was a seven-year famine, and five years into the famine, it was just a bit too much for them to handle. They were going to die of, of hunger and Anyway, Jacob ended up in Egypt because he got an invitation from his son, Joseph, the prime minister. He moved his entire family. I think there were, what, 70 people? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. When Jacob went to Egypt, they, they, he got there with 70 people. So let's say plus Joseph, 71, Joseph's wife, 72, who was actually an Egyptian, Joseph's two children. And uh, so at the, at the most 75 people, at the most, uh, when they left Egypt, there were anywhere between two million to three million people. Now, that's awesome, isn't it? That's amazing. The wisdom of God. The reason why we know, you know, it's between two, we don't know exactly what number, but between two million and three million people is because we have this number from the Bible that they had 600,000 men of war that is a number that's given to us. When Israel, the people, the Israelites, when the Israelites left Egypt, the only specific number we're given in the Bible is of uh, the men of war. The men of war were 600,000. So outside of the Bible, in the world of academia and the world of uh, population studies, how you figure out like how many people live in this tribe, live in this country, live, you know, how they, they start from one point using figures and extrapolate and build up and get a number, like an, a rough estimate. Well, you just figure out if you have 600,000 young men, men of war, so that's young men. That is between 20 and 40. This way, I'm just talking Bible, but even in the world, in the world system, they don't allow, say, 60-year-old people to go to war. Do, do they allow? No. They don't. Okay. So, so you see, you, you can figure things out. You know, okay, 
if we have a group of people and we have uh, out of this group 600,000 going to war, then we obviously have people who are older than people who can go to war, who can fight. Yes? Then you have people who are younger than the soldiers. 600,000 men. That means they had mothers and fathers. And men between 20 and 40 years of age, a number of them would be married. Likely a majority. And talking about back then, not today, but back then, people didn't say, I don't want to be married, or I don't want children, or I don't want, I, you know, we didn't have the way the world is. And men weren't marrying men, women weren't marrying women. So you can't fig factor the way we, we do things today into how they used to do it back then. You understand? So the 600,000 people, they had mothers. So you figure how many women, mothers, and fathers, how many fathers. So you put it all together, and you're likely to get between two and three million people. And this was all God's plan. I mean, it just, it, it amazes me. Sometimes you have to think about these things. That God had a plan, and the people didn't even know what was going on. Amen. When Jacob moved his family to Egypt, to Egypt, initially Jacob didn't want to do it. This I'm an old man, we're here. Eh. But well, I miss my son Joseph. Okay, I'll come. We don't really have food to, so I'll come. But I'm an old man. I'd rather be here. I don't want to travel anymore. I've done this thing. You know. So, okay. Well, read, read that text. You're going to see that he, it wasn't something that he was like, yeah, let's do this. You know, Disney World, here I come. No, it wasn't after Super Bowl. No. You read the Bible, you have to kind of pay attention. I mentioned some things last week. It was just to challenge you to not even accept something because I said you have to read the Bible for yourself. Because we, we accept things because some pastors said it and all the pastors are saying it, so we figure it must be true. Well, if the Bible doesn't say so, you should not live by it. Praise the Lord. So I pointed things out, you know, like uh, the three, it wasn't three wise men who went to the baby Jesus. The Bible doesn't say it was three wise men, but we all say three wise men. Where did we get that from? So you have to check some things you have believed that are not necessarily in the Bible. For example, I've been telling you all that when a pastor or a prophet or a man of God tells you that you have to sow a financial seed. You know, financial is money, okay? You have to sow a financial seed, money seed, before God heals you. That pastor just lied to you. Amen. And that pastor just misrepresented God. Amen. Maybe that pastor was sincere. In fact, a lot of pastors, they are more sincere pastors than they are insincere ones. Amen. It is the few false prophets who give us all a bad name. And I'm really very upset right now. Because they're giving us such a bad name. Okay, so let me, since I have the platform, let me talk. <laughs> Before you came to love God, he sent Jesus to die for your sins. And please listen, Jesus Christ took your diseases as well on his back, and by his stripes you are already healed. So God has already healed you. He's not going to ask you to pay him money before he heals you. You're already healed. Therefore, any pastor who tells anybody to give money before they are healed is lying. It's lying. Even if they believe it's the truth, they are wrong. And it must stop. Hallelujah. I know some of you don't like it. You don't like it because you've been doing it. We did because some pastors told you that. And in fact, maybe you got a miracle. So you're convinced that what you did was what gave you a miracle. No, it was the mercy of God. 
It was the grace of God. It was the love of God. God just said, all these people, I won't use that, that word, but God just said, these people, they don't even know what they are doing. Let me just help them. I was going to use a different word for people who don't know what they are doing. But it will sound like I'm insulting you. I want you to learn. Nobody feel like I'm insulting them. So God just said, they don't know what they are doing. You know, let me just help them. Listen, listen, please. You don't have to pay God to wash away your sins. Amen. You don't have to pay God to heal you of diseases. Jesus already did that. Seek the apple tree among the trees of humanity. Sit under his shadow. And he says, sit. He didn't say, come and struggle. He said, sit. Sit means rest. rest. Repose. Asievo silver play. Sit down, please. And rest. Take it easy. Chill. That's God. He has been misrepresented. Like he hates people. God doesn't hate anybody. In fact, let me tell you this. God didn't even make hell to put any human being in hell. Well, some people go to hell. I believe some people go to hell. Oh, yes. But God did not make hell for anybody. He made hell for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25 says hell was made for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. If it was made for the devil and his angels, let him go. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, he wants to take people with him. Mm -hmm. you, should I give you the reference? Is that what you're saying? No? Yeah, it's okay. uh, it's all right, I'll give you the reference. Yeah. That's not what you said, but maybe you are helping me. Somebody said, well, what, where is it? So let me just quickly show you all that, and then I'll go on. Okay. So that's Matthew 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. What I just said. Matthew 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. Let's read it. One, two, three. Please read. Then shall he say unto them on the light left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, Prepared for the devil and his angels. Something that was prepared for the devil and his angels, may you not go there. Amen. Let him go alone. Amen. Let me show you something. Wednesday I'm going to be teaching this. So join me on Wednesday. On, on the phone line and Facebook. We had a new number for the phone line. Amen. Amen. We work hard to prepare these teachings for you. Some of you just don't read your emails. There's an email that says there's a new number for Wednesday night. Don't call the old number. Call a new number. Amen. Amen. That's discipline. Praise the Lord. That's like teaching starts at 11 o'clock. Be seated so that you don't disturb me. It's nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Okay. What did I say? <laughs> um, you knew I was going to get you. Hallelujah. Sweetly and nicely, right? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are losing discipline in the church. Because some of us just want money and we're not interested in the people's life. We know when we correct them, some of them will come back. Mm -hmm. So we don't correct anymore in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not cool. Brethren, it's not cool. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me just come back and stay on course. So what was that? Pardon me? Yeah. I was telling you that Jesus Christ was taken, yes, uh, in the Gospels, 
and I took you to Hosea to even show you that it was prophesied, had a dual prophecy about God bringing Israel out of, out of Egypt into the promised land. And within that too, Hosea was talking about God bringing Jesus Christ out of, out of Egypt, right? So Jesus was not born in Africa. He was taken to Africa. I, was, yeah, I just I wanted to teach that from, from the Bible. Everybody gets this? Okay. How, how many of you have ever heard somebody arguing using the book of Revelation that Jesus was black because it says his hair was wool? How many have heard that? Say amen. amen. So I know. Okay. The Bible doesn't say his hair was wool. It doesn't say that. So if you're going to act, especially argue with something, you have to make sure you quote it right. All right? So anyway, I, I just told you that. I won't go off. But the Bible says that. I mean, it doesn't say that his hair was woolly. It says it says it was like wool. As white as. So it's referring to not texture, but referring to by color. Amen. Okay, let me actually show you a scripture to settle this. 2 Corinthians 5. I think it's 16 or 15. Let me, let me show you. I mentioned this maybe two months ago. Let me show you this. 2 Corinthians 5. What was the first verse I mentioned? 2 Corinthians 5, what did I say? 16? 16. Usually the first number that comes into my mind is the correct one. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Let me show you something, please. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Can I have that, please? Thank you. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Therefore, from now on, yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Therefore, from now on, are you there? From now on. Okay. We regard no one according to the flesh. <laughs> All right. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Everybody learn, learn something. <coughs> if I teach you something in church from the Bible, you see it in church. And you you believe something different, but I prove it from scripture. Would you change your mind right here and now? Yeah. Yeah. You will? Yeah. Okay. But we don't. We don't. We're, we're, we're human beings are difficult people. And I want you to know today that any good thing that happens in your life, it's not because you did it, it's because God did it. Because yeah. we just like doing our own thing. We are we are very hard. We are stubborn. We, we are we are we are a mess without Jesus. Serious human beings. We we are too hard. We are too hard. We are racist. We are tribalistic. If men talk down about women. Women gather together when there's no men there. They talk bad about men. Not all women, not all men, but these are things that happen all the time. You know, people make funny fun of people who don't know how to drive because they can't see very well because they have squinty eyes. I've heard that. People do that. And the part that irritates me the worst is when I hear Haitian 
is disparagation. Or an American disparage Americans. Or for that matter, a Ghanaian disparage Ghanaians. And they do it all the time. Not all of them, but most of them. Oh, ask for Ghanaians. And the person talking is a Ghanaian. After today, if you're a Ghanaian and you're a Christian, listen to me. Stop that. Stop it. Nothing makes you better than other persons. It's just like not all white Americans, but some white Americans who don't like other people. What, what is wrong with human beings? Sin. Sin. Let's repent. What is inside a person is more important than the color of their skin. Amen. Amen. I make you uncomfortable enough and you squirm enough to change is better Amen. than to live prejudice, to live racist. It's not good. <laughs> you know, thank God for his mercy and grace. You hear some people preaching, they talk about sinners, they talk about Muslims, talk about Hindus. Some of the Christian so-called are worse off. They are mean. So mean-spirited. And you're going to find people of other religions, some of them are kinder. Yep. Amen. Yep. So salvation is only by grace. Amen. Amen. Salvation is only by grace through faith in Christ. Thank God. Look at this. Look at this. If you learn this, you get rid of racism. Therefore, from now on, from now, from today, we regard no one according to the flesh. Amen. I rest my case. From today, you don't deal with a person because of the color of their skin. But as somebody said, for because of the what? The content of their character. That's taken straight out of scripture. Straight out of scripture. Most good things in this world, people just change it. They don't say the Bible says. They just say, somebody say an ancient story, but they took it straight out of scripture. Look at that. That solves racism. Look at it. Therefore, from now on, do we even believe the Bible? From now on, we regard no one. <laughs> no one. No one means no one. So what are you going to do if you're black, you don't like white people, and your daughter marries a white person? What are you going to do? Because it's going to happen. I pray that it happens in Jesus' name. <laughs> Therefore, from now on, God has a sense of humor. He has a way of getting you. He will get you. If God would get you. Oh, I believe you. Therefore, in a good way, that's what I mean. From now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, we have known him according to the flesh. And of the flesh, the Bible tells us that of the flesh, he came as an Israelite. Of the house of David, the tribe of Judah. That is not African tribe. I'm from Africa. I was born in Africa. I'm from heaven, actually. But I came to Africa. <laughs> Amen. I've told you that already, right? Yeah. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, flesh, watch it. Yet now, going back up there to the same now. How many times do you see now? Twice. Yet now, we know him this way no longer. So stop the argument about whether he was black white, or purple, or indigo, doesn't matter. Clap for me, clap, clap for me, clap for me. Clap for me, clap for me. I, I saw racism right there. All by myself in three minutes. God is good. 
Let's just love people, you know? Love people. Amen. Okay. So, go to Song of Solomon. Let me, let me do a better job today. This last week I started it and I didn't finish. I don't even know if I started. I started, but I didn't finish. So, Song of Solomon, chapter 2. I'm going to have to go with the media team. I can't find Song of Solomon in, any longer in my Bible. So, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, please. Verse 3. Thank you. So, as the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down in your Bible on your notes and the line sat. Sat down under his shadow. Under my shadow. With great delight. And his fruit was sweet to my taste. Under my sweet. Wait. So how many words have we underlined that start with S? The letter S. How many words, church? Three. I sat down, so sat, that's one, under his shadow with great delight. Shadow, that's S. That's his covering. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So that's what he was talking about. Do you get it? For those who weren't here last week, I explained that sitting, I sat down under his shadow. I sat down. When you sit, you are at rest. Amen. Amen. Peace. And not struggling. So don't struggle to try to get from God. Receive by faith and just thank you. You don't have to pay, ah, I remember, thank you, Lord. You don't have to pay God money to heal you. You don't have to pay God money to save you. You don't have to pay God money to deliver you. If you are married, you want a child, and there's some struggle with that, you don't have a child. You don't have to pay God money to give you a child. It's not a spiritual idea. Amen. Sometimes you go to... Uh, in vitro fertilization, IVF, and they charge you $10,000 for that process. Some pastors figure that out, so they also charge you $10,000 to pray for people. It's happening. It is happening in the name of God. And I know it's a point I was going to make about that. You know, if you do that in the name of God, if God wasn't gracious, you go to hell. Sometimes we're thinking about other people, we're pointing fingers at people, they don't know Jesus. You know Jesus and you are doing this? If God wasn't gracious, you would go to hell. There are things we're doing in the name of God that is a shame. And it must stop. Up. Let's discipline ourselves in the church so that the world, God doesn't use the world to discipline us. Amen. Judgment must begin in the house of God. It's better that we prune ourselves. And for God to judge us by letting the fool rule us. Read the Bible. When, when a fool rules you, that is judgment. Comfort me, verse 5. I'm sorry, I, didn't, I missed verse 4. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Look at that. God says, what I want people to see about me, my, my banner. You know banner? The marquee, what God wants displayed is God is love. God is love. 
God is love. But I bet you the more people who know about God as a judge than they know about God being love. There are even more Christians who, whose minds are on the judgment of God. Some of them are just walking because they're afraid. I don't want to mess up because I want to go to hell. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to. God isn't like that. He wants your conscience to be purified from dead works. Simple works. To serve the living God in love. It's like buying a, a book left behind series for people just because you want to scare them. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting to read. I like, I like the book of Revelation. I find it fascinating. I like it. Uh, but it's about the revelation of Jesus Christ. The book itself starts and says, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. You're supposed to be looking at Jesus. Not all the fire and brimstone that's raining down people. But look to Jesus. You say, him. Look to Jesus. He's your peace. Look to Jesus. He's your joy. Look to Jesus. He's your healing. Look to Jesus. Don't look to me. Don't look to the bishop, the archbishop, the pastor. Bishop, I love you. But don't look to us. Look to Jesus. Follow Jesus. He is the author. He is the finisher of our faith. He starts it. If he starts it and he's the one who finishes it, then it must mean that he's the one who is working through all of it, all throughout. He says, I start and I finish. That implies that he is the process. When I start something, I complete it. He that has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion. God loves you. His banner over you is love. That's the message. I'm done, I'm done, finished. That's the message. Yeah, so he says, sustain me. Ah, sustain me, your sustenance, your strength, your comfort, your peace, your joy, your health, your life. Sustenance. What does he use to uphold you, to keep you? Sustain me with, oh, you, you switched on me. Go back to my version, Old King James. Thank you. Sustain me with flagons. I explained to those who are not here. Flagons of wine. That's a container. That contains wine. Wine speaks of joy. Comfort me with apples. For I am sick of love. Amen. Comfort me with apples. In, in Israel, the use of the word apple here uh, is a reference to any number of trees in the apple family. Pomegranate is in the apple family. Apricots. Do you say apricot? Okay. Apricot is in the apple family, for example. What's that? Yeah? Did I, did I say the right way? Okay. All right. Oh, they're surprised. Yes. Okay, yeah, same family. Yeah. Same family. Even, even uh, orange is considered part of the apple family. Yeah. Even orange. You know some of the oranges that you buy here in America to get the color they have, they dyed, they dyed them. Right? <laughs> what are you we eating? <laughs> Better pray about what you eat. Yeah, the FDA allows the farmers to dye, dye, so you can get the kind of color that they feel uh, it's, it's pleasant to people and people would want. But that's just a human being's mind trying to change something God did. And we think we're smarter than God. In Africa, the oranges we eat, they're green. But we don't have any problem with it. It's green. We don't have a problem with it. But somebody in the FDA decided that you only like it if it's not green. And then it becomes the order. 
Whoever decided that uh, soda, what's soda? What's another name? Pop soda. What's that? soda? Another name. You know soda? Soda drink. Pop. Soda was not good, so they decided to make the other one. What's the other soda they made? The, the diet soda. The diet soda. So people stopped drinking the soda and went to the diet. Now they are telling us the diet will kill you. It's actually worse. Let me teach you something right here. Let me teach you something right here. Live by your spirit. Amen. Come on, please pay attention. Listen, listen, you're talking, I hear too much. Okay, listen. Live by your spirit. Sometimes, even with natural things like things you eat, you sense something within you. Don't eat this thing. That is the spirit of the Lord helping you, your body. Don't make a law for somebody. In fact, you, that same person, two or three years, two, two or three months later, you may be released to eat the same thing that God cautions you not to eat three months earlier. Because there may be something going on inside you that this particular thing that you're eating may connect with that is not good for you. That w where you are at that time, maybe you stop exercising, so your body is not as strong. So God knows if you add this thing to that thing at this time, it's not going to do go well. So what? Listen to your spirit. Same thing with driving. Listen to your spirit, and when you sense the direction of God, go at the front route. Do it. Amen. 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 About two weeks ago, I think, or last week, I remember now, so many things, but God put in my spirit, uh, told me this, and to put it out there, to help my friends. I put it on Facebook. Somebody has gone on vacation, their favorite place, they love it, they have a great time. Two years in a row, they're going back this year. I don't know person. They're going back this year, and they're not supposed to go back there this year. Sometimes God will not tell you why. You don't always have to be told why. So what are you going to do? You do what God says. Amen. When uh, we were in England, you know, before God said, to come here to America. Uh, he told me you send me here. Just said it one time. In 84. October 84. So I started praying. I just prayed. I didn't know when, how, whatever. I got a map and then I just put it on my wall. Just to pray. And then a year later, 85. year later, exactly a year later, God says, so, put your ministry in order and you're leaving soon. November 85. January 86, I was here. Now this first mistake I made. So God says he's going to send me here to America. And uh, when he said, put, put the ministry in order, you're leaving soon, uh, I began to put things in place. And I bought my ticket. I just didn't, didn't ask him where. Just bought my ticket. And I was actually going to a conference. I'd been invited to attend a conference, a more serial conference in, in LA. So I, I went there as part of my itinerary. I went there. Uh, but I just bought my ticket. And then I was praying. God said, uh, you didn't ask me where to go. I said, oh yeah. Uh, well, I already bought my ticket. 
I'm going to the conference, but I have uh, friends in Boston. So I'm going to go to Boston. He said, I didn't tell you to go to Boston. I said, God, well, now it's your problem. It's going to cost me so much money to change the ticket. So you fix it. <laughs> if it's that important to you that I go, you fix it. <laughs> Don't judge me. I was like 20, 26, I think. <laughs> anyway. That was my first mistake. So God said, just go. When you get there, I'll tell you where to go. So anyway, I go to, I try to go to Boston. Three days later, I leave and go to the conference. And at the conference, so I'm very anxious, praying, Lord, okay, after the conference, a week long, where do I go? And then God sent somebody I didn't know. We were in the ballroom, it's a conference in a hotel. I'm leaving. You know, you go to your room. So I'm leaving, walking out, and this lady comes by and says, God says, excuse me. So I turn and says, God says, I should tell you, you talk to you in the morning. Wow. And I'm stuck. <laughs> so I said, thank you, and she just leaves. Never seen the person. That, I mean, that's it. Never seen the person since. Whether it was a, an angel or a human being, I have no idea. Yeah. I was like, okay, morning. I don't know what time in the morning, so I'm just going to stay up all night. Because it can be two in the morning, three in the morning. So I stayed up. Because I was kind of desperate. I was like, where do I go after I leave? Where do I go? She said, I'll tell you where to go. And the meet, the program's about to end on Friday, and I need to know where to go. So God spoke to me on Thursday, and he said, you will go and minister. Be you will go and minister in the Washington, D.C. area. I didn't even know you said Washington, D.C. area. I knew that Washington, D.C. was the capital of the United States. And I'm 26. This is, you know, a long time ago. And, and my first, second mistake. I said, Washington, D.C.? What's in Washington, D.C.? Let me see. There's, there's no ministry I know of in Washington, D.C. There's no international ministry in Washington, D.C. Uh, it's only politics. I don't like politics. I don't want to go to Washington, D.C. No, I don't want to go. So like Jonah, I go a different route. Yeah. It's so funny. Today, I think about the, the, the we have four kids, and I think about that. I wonder what kind of People that would have been if I raised them up, would raise them up in Oklahoma, because I, <laughs> I just think about that as part of myself. So I, yeah, I went, I went to Tulsa, and like Jonah, my the, the airline lost my luggage. So eventually they found it. Praise God. I said, can I come for my luggage? They said, no, we're very sorry, though. We have to tell you, your luggage is in Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, I'm shaking. <laughs> like, what? God, what is in Washington, D.C.? I didn't know wonderful people you were here. Yes, Praise God. Yes, Amen. So what sustains you in life? Jesus Christ. He said, sustain me or comfort me with apples. I'll show you draw two. Please go, come with me back to, I'm sorry, uh, Song of Solomon 2, excuse me. Song of Solomon chapter two. And we saw in verse three, as the tree, apple tree among the trees of wood, I'm just pointing out how he singles out the apple tree. And then as you read later, he points to how sweet it is. That he points to the shadow of the apple tree. Right? And he also tells you that you are able to sit under it. 
So you take those three points about the apple tree. You can sit under. It's easier to sit under the apple tree. There are actually some trees that you can't sit under. But you can sit under Christ. Amen. Amen. Shadow. The apple tree gives you a shadow. A shadow of comfort. A shadow of protection. And then it's also sweet. So he tells you that this tree will give you these three things. That no tree can provide. No tree will provide you all three like that apple tree. That's what he's saying to you. And then sustain you. Some trees in the forest have, have a shade. They'll give you shade, but there's no fruit. Amen. Some have a shade, but you can't even sit under. Amen. How do we know that wood refers to people, as I was saying at the beginning? The apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. So the apple tree is to the beloved as the wood is to sons. Come on, let's do it again. Verse 3. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. So my beloved is the apple tree and the sons are the wood. Right? Amen. Okay, let's look in the Bible. Give me Jeremiah 5 verse 14. Jeremiah 5 14. Jeremiah 5 14. Let's see what that says. Media team. Jeremiah 5 14. We, we have it? No, Jeremiah. Jer the book of Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 14. We have it? I, and what I'm looking for is where it says... Uh, Minister Oscar, can you bring your Bible? Do you have it? Yeah. No, I'm yeah. Jer Jeremiah 5, 14. I'm looking for where it says that people are what? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Who, who, who has it? Can you bring your Bible? Uh, Beverly, please. Yes. Uh, wait one second. You told me your name. Talisha? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, I'll give it right back to you. Okay. Can you stay with me, please? 514. Okay, thank you. I like your Bible. I can read it. I got it. Big print. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So, Jeremiah 514. Let's listen to the word of God. It says, Wherefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire and this people what wood and it shall devour them amen. amen thank you thank you Felicia God bless you appreciate it okay, everybody sees this okay so we have it let me see where does it say find Haggai I, I don't know this where does it say in Haggai uh, go to the mountain, fetch wood, and build me a temple. Chapter 2. Somebody Google, go to the mountain, Haggai. <coughs> go to the mountain and fetch wood and build me a temple. Help me out, church. When you find it, give it to me. So I'm, I want to give you a second reference where people are wood. You look for it. And I'm going to Judges chapter 9 while you look for it. So Google that or do whatever your laptops and phones do. Is Reverend Rosemary here? Perfect. Thank you. So look for that for me. Haggai. Oh, you found it. Praise God. 
I love you guys. God bless you. Okay, good. So that was Haggai 1, 8. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, says the Lord. Amen. Okay, now all of that, that's like physical building, yeah? Go and chop down wood, let's build. But we know that God does not dwell in buildings. God dwells in people. So the spiritual significance of this is that God is looking for a spiritual building. Amen? We are the temple of God. We are. Yes? God dwells in your spirit. Your spirit lives in your body. God lives in your spirit. Okay. So this is actually talking about this. Bring wood. Bring the people. And build the house. Build the house of God. Amen. Bring the people and build the house of God. And I will dwell in them. Praise the Lord. Don't let the mountain bother you. It's all in the word. It's all part of it. In fact, the mountain actually clues you into the fact that he's talking about the gospel, preaching the gospel. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who publish glad tidings, who says to Zion, your God brings. So the mountain clues you to the fact that he's talking about bringing the good news to wood, which is what? People. All right. Can I rest my kids? Okay, good. Let's go to Judges 9. Judges chapter 9. Okay, over here too, uh, I'm looking for the trees looking to make somebody a king. Judges 9, verse 8. Media team, give me verse 8. Let's start there. Let's see what that says. Now everybody has to pay attention to this. So we get, we get, we get it. All right? Please. Hello? Yeah. Okay. The trees went forth at a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, reign over us. We don't have time to get into all of it. But notice, the trees went forth. There's a certain time the trees went and said, you know, we olive tree, come and rule, rule us. The olive tree says, no, I, I don't have time to do it. Read it when you go home. Then after that, they, they asked another tree. They asked a fig tree. And the fig tree said, no, I don't want to do it. Then they ask the vine in verse 13. The vine says, I don't want to do it. Verse 14. Give me verse 14, please. Then said all the trees to the bramble, come and reign over us. To the bramble bush, to thorns. So if you are an olive tree and you will not walk in your anointing, olive, anointing, olive oil, anointing, that speaks of the anointing. If you won't walk in power, thorns will prick you. The other tree, the other one was fig tree. The fig tree is known for its sweetness, like the apple. Sweet. Hey Amen. It's supposed to be sweet. Hallelujah. If you don't walk in it, thorns will take the place of sweetness. Yeah. It's like if you refuse to be sweet in your family, Thorns will walk in. Think about it. Some of you are not even known to be sweet at all in your family. When you are coming to what what is that thing everybody gets together annually or family read, and people start asking, "Is he coming? Is she, is she coming? Is Uncle this coming? Is Aunt this coming?" I was actually thinking about something this morning, but I'm not going to say. I was thinking. In all my life, I love everybody. There's only one person I don't like. 
I was just thinking about it this morning. Ever since I was born till, till now, I, I just love people. I was thinking, who don't I? There's only one person I don't like in this world. I was just thinking this morning, and I was saying to myself, now you're going to go preach. You need to repent. You need to really stop doing this thing. But there's one person I don't like. And I repent. Ah, because it bothers me, it just annoys me. Anyway, I repent. I still don't like what they did. Yeah, I love her, but I don't like her. You know, one day my brother shared a testimony, you know, about how uh, how we were raised. You know, this is when our mom died. My brother shared a testimony about how God restored our lives and restored family and our parents, uh, and how we ended up, you know, the last, what, like 20 years of their life, uh, they ended up, you know, living together, and they died, and somehow we buried them, you know, like side by side, you know, it's a long story, but anyway, I, I was just thinking, you know, when, when in their life they were going through their challenges, there was a time that they were separated, and I remember, uh, you know, somebody brought my mother's things that she's left in her marital home. And when they came, they dumped it in the gutter in front of the house. Now it's a little boy and I saw it. And from that day, I never liked that person. And this one I was thinking about, I was like, ah, oh Lord, I'm going to preach today. And why did this thing come into my mind today? Lord, oh, Jesus. Oh. Okay, I love her, but I don't like her. Still don't like her. She had no right to put my mom's stuff, just throw them out like that. I don't like her. I love her. I don't even know why this came this morning. I think God wants to heal me, you know? I think God wants to heal me. All right. Okay, Lord. All right. All right. You know, like they say, you all pray for my strength. You ever heard a testimony? You all pray for my strength. I like that. Yeah. But praise God, you know, uh, mom always believed for the restoration of, of the marriage. And uh, God gave her what she asked for. I remember saying this at, at her funeral home going. I was like, man, this woman had so much faith, you know. God was stuck. So it's all good. Praise God. All right. Maybe. For me, the Lord was saying, don't let the bramble rule that part of your heart. Amen. Amen. If it helps somebody, God bless you. Amen. You know? Because it's a good thing to live. I was, I was thinking this, I was like, I've never, I always like people. There's only one person. I think God wants me to just be free. Amen. So today, you know what? I sit under the apple tree. Yeah. Jesus, I sit under you. And I take my freedom. Amen. I take it, Lord. I take it. I take it. Even, even for my own mother, she was never even angry at the person. But as a little boy, I was angry, you know? So I take my liberty. I sit under. Father, I pray now. I thank you for my own life. I thank you for my life. Let this, what I've shared, that's very personal. I help somebody today, somebody dealing with a very personal, deep and intimate thing. Let it heal them, let it help them. Jesus, we have seen that you are the most preeminent tree among the trees. All the trees of humanity, all the, the prophets, the priests, all the great people have ever lived that people follow. You are the one who came from heaven to end our sadness, to end our sorrow, to end our sicknesses, to end our separation from God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I come in prayer.
for myself and for anyone like me to whom you're speaking today, saying, forgive that person, let that thing go, mm -hmm. receive your healing and be free. We receive healing, we receive that freedom. We receive liberty of spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I pray that, Lord, you replace the bitter feeling, the bitter taste with sweetness. That which the enemy did to leave a bitter taste in our mouth. I pray this for anyone who has experienced bitterness in a marriage, bitterness in their own life, a bitter taste that somebody impacted them, the devil used somebody to impact them adversely. I ask for healing, heal, heal. Like me impacted as a child. If somebody here was impacted as a child, abused emotionally, uh, physically, sexually, mentally, whatever it may have been, I ask for healing today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please, if, if what I'm saying does not apply to you specifically, that is, I've not given your exact example, but the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you about something else related to it, please eat of that sweet fruit and let that bitter taste go. Let that bitter taste go. Let that be Satan did to prick you, to become thorns to you and hurt you and wound you. Let that be removed in Jesus' name. Pray with me. You can sit, you can stand, uh, but let's just pray together. Receive your freedom today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come to Jesus and sit under his shadow. I come and I take my liberty from that which impacted me as a child. I let it go today. I stand before God and before this assembly and I say from my heart, I let it go. I receive my healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So for your relationships, receive your healing. It may be a parent and a child. Receive your healing. You may be spouses. Receive your healing. I pray that you eat of the sweet fruit of Jesus Christ. I pray that you have peace. Jesus, you come in. And that which the devil did ends. You came to destroy the works of the enemy. I pray that any activity, an operation of darkness in anybody's life ends today in Jesus' name. Even if it has taken 40 years or longer, like in my case, today you are healed. Today you are delivered. Hallelujah. If you are here and you're saying, my mother left us when we were little, or you're saying, my father left us when we were little. I never had a relationship with my father. If you are saying that. I once ministered to a man who was always depressed on Father's Day. He was deeply wounded because he never had a father. His father left them. He didn't want to have anything to do. He was a grown man with children of his own, and he was still hurt. And one day, right here in the service, God set him free. You'd be amazed what people carry. Maybe God just led me this way this morning uh, to prepare me to be used of God to help you. To let somebody know that God sees what ails you, hurts you, disturbs you. Receive your healing now. 
receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Jesus went to the pool of Bethesda. There's a man who for decades had been crippled. Jesus knew he had been there for a long time. And Jesus went to him. I'm telling you, Jesus has come to you today. Come under his shadow. Bring whatever it is. Bring your life under his covering. Bring the pain, the hurt, the anxiety, the fear, whatever it is. Bring yourself under him. And take delight in the peace he gives, in the joy he gives, in the comfort that he brings. In John chapter 5, that man walked that day for the first time in his life. Jesus knew he had been there in that situation for a long time. The Lord knew I had carried this thing for a long time. And I thank him that today he has set me free. Hallelujah. I pray for your freedom also. Rise spiritually. Rise physically. Rise emotionally. Rise mentally. In the name of Jesus, may you rise also even financially in your business so that you have the money to help people. You have to put into that business to touch people. Whatever it is that you need, I pray that you come under Jesus today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, just as you entered that place and that cripple in John 5 rose and, I, and walked, I pray that anybody crippled today will rise and walk in Jesus' name. Receive power, receive power, receive power, receive power. Where you feel weak, be empowered today. Where you are sad, receive the joy of the Lord. The Lord sustain you with flagons of wine of the Spirit. The wine of the Spirit. The wine of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, may you eat of Jesus the apple tree today. Eat of Jesus. Find sweetness in Him. Joy in Him. Peace in Him. May everything that wounds, that destroys, leave. In Jesus' name, Makataya. Nay Parando Zetaya. Let's pray together. I'm going to ask the pastors, please help me at this point. Pastors and prayer ministers, please. Let's pray with the church. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.